where she saw wild polar bears. Today she will be telling us a story that she's working on to present to the elementary school children that she works with as a docent at the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. She has in this speech humanized the emotions of the polar bear and is playing the voice of a bear. She is teaching the children about bears, their habitat, and some of their behaviors. She has slides to accompany her presentation. Her tour group did not see a mother and cubs or hunting bears, so those slides have been taken from the internet. <coughs> but the others are all from her personal library. So let's please welcome Charlotte. For her speech, My Story by P. Bear. I find myself lying on a furry surface. A small paw touches my foot and I recognize my sister, but we're no longer in that amniotic abyss. My lifeline is missing and I'm hungry. My eyes are still closed, but I have a very good sense of smell. My nose twitches, I crawl a little bit and I find a milk nipple, which my mouth takes and I suck. My sister finds one also. There's four milk stations on this furry surface. We must be on a milk machine. A large paw cuddles me. One cuddles my sister. I feel so comfortable. A nice, soft tongue licks my head. This isn't a milk machine. This is my mother. I know I know. The first month, my sister and I nurse and sleep. Mother's been fasting for many weeks now. The second month, our st eyes start to open, and we play around the birth den a little bit. When we were born, we weighed one pound. We were the size of a box of butter. At the end of two months, we were 20 pounds. Marine mammals have the fattest milk of any mammals on Earth. One morning, Mother says, Today, you will discover the Arctic, your home. She breaks through the ice and snow on top of our birth den, and we see our first sunrise on the Arctic. It's vast. I'm so excited this will be my home. My sister and I play around the birth den for a couple of weeks to get used to our muscles and to stretch our legs and to walk around on the snow. After a couple of weeks, Mom says she's very hungry and it's time to learn to hunt seals. We take off and Mom teaches us that the life of a polar bear is walking and waiting. Not too long after we start walking, we encounter a wonderful smell. It's so delicious and Mom says, this is seal. Ringed seals are the main food of the Churchill Bears of the Hudson Bay. We get a little closer and the smell gets stronger. Mom's hackles go up. Sister and I start to feel fear. I'm shaking. I'm afraid. Mom puts us behind a snowdrift and she said, I saw a large bear that just killed a ring seal. Never, ever, ever as a cub go near the large male bears. If they're hungry, they will kill cubs. They can be cannibals. We hide behind the snowdrift until Mom says the coast is clear. The large bear only eats the fat and the skin of the seal because he's well fed. Mom's very hungry. When we get to the seal, there's lots of meat left, so Mom has a good meal. 
We have our first taste of seal and it's delicious. After mom gets fed, she tells us that the rest of the winter we're going to learn to hunt seals and learn about our Arctic environment. We learned there's three ways that polar bears hunt seals. First, the easiest way is we torpedo and dive into a seal's birth den. We usually get a juicy young meal from that. The next way is waiting. We find a blowhole where the seals have to come up and get air. They're marine mammals. They swim a lot, but when they come up to get a breath of air, we can catch us a nice lunch. And the third way we hunt seals, we can stalk either on the ice or in the water. We're very, very good swimmers. When the seals come out to bask in the sun, we'll sneak up on them and have a nice dinner. The days are getting warmer, and Mom says the ice in Hudson Bay melts, so we're going to have to spend the summer on the tundra without any food. When the ice melts, we find ourselves on the tundra, and Mom teaches us to groom. She tells us we're going to have a didactic three years with her, learning everything we need to know as polar bears. This is a picture of my sister grooming her tummy. We have wonderful fur. It's a great protection, and we take very good care of it. Here's a picture of me. I'm rolling in a kelp bed. It helps me scratch my back and keep my fur nice and protective so it'll protect my body. The days are starting to get colder now. Mom teaches us to eat kelp. There's no food nutritional value in kelp for bears, but it helps my digestive system to wake up because the ice is coming and I'm going to catch some more seals. We stay with mom for two more years, and the third year when the ice comes, mom tells us, you're going to become solitary bears this year. We're not sure what she means. We follow her, we're very competent hunters, and we're still nursing a little bit. One day we see a large male bear. Sister and I shake with fear, but mom walks towards this male bear, and she turns to us and says, Go away, you're now solitary bears. We follow her a little bit, and the large bear charges towards us. He hits at my back leg. I run one way, sister goes the other. We're now solitary bears on the ice of the Hudson Bay, near the town of Churchill. Seven years go by, and in the winter, I feel competent, and I feel big and strong. I have another sense of smell, and I know it's time for me to pass on my genetics. I see a female, and as I approach her, a bigger bear comes towards me. He scars my nose and scares me away. But I know in the future, I will pass on my genetics. I'm 12 years old now. And I'm living on the tundra. Mother told us never to go near Churchill, but I venture towards it and I fall into a bear trap. I'm put in polar bear jail. <laughs> in the jail, I'm very sad. But it protects the humans from the bears and the bears from, and the bears from the humans. I lay on a cement floor and I think my life is over. One day, the men say, one day the men say, we're going to have a bear lift. I don't know what this means. The next morning, I feel a sharp poke in my leg, and I fall into a deep sleep. In this sleep, I dream I become a flying bear. <laughs> I'm moved on a forklift, a net is put around me, and I hear whop, 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 whop. Then, I fly through the air. When I wake up from this sleep, I'm on the tundra again. The weather is getting cold. I know I can hunt seals. But my senses tell me I'm 40 miles from the Hudson Bay. 
Walking and waiting is the life of the bear. I learned that from my mother. I walk towards the bay, and the weather's getting cold. I'm a full, mature bear, and I spar with other bears to get my energy up for hunting and for passing on my genetics. We also wrestle, and we spar some more. In the mornings, I look towards the ice, towards the bay. I'm looking for ice. I'm waiting for the ice to form so I can hunt seals. One morning, the ice is freezing. I'm ready for another year. I have many good years on the ice. I'm hunting seals, I'm passing on my genetics. I'm an old bear now, I rest a lot. <clears throat> I'm 25. But I've had a good life. I've felt love. I've been confident, and I've been able to pass on my genetics. Also, I felt sadness when I didn't do what my mother told me. 25 years, perhaps when the ice melts next spring, I won't return to the tundra. It's been a good polar bear life. Mm -hmm.